So um, just to let, again, you know, this is shift, you know, your person is right around the corner. And um, I've, you know, had people to ask me for a bigger screen. So I'm trying to give them the biggest screen they can possibly be while I can still see my people on the side. So here are some Christian Singles links. Um, if you don't know, again, if you're new to us, you can go to our website. You can shop and buy some cool CSC gear. You can donate. Um, I, we'd also put it in the chat. Um, Lori or Sean might continue to put those things in the chat, maybe every 15 to 20 minutes. But um, those are things that you can um, do. And you know, to just kind of connect with us a little bit more. We don't do as much with our Instagram page, but you can you know, get on there because we're trying to do more um, also with that and our TikTok. So if you want to, you know, do CSC, you can do that. If you want to follow me, you can look for me, but you don't have to, you know, I'm not important. <laughs> um, you know, CSC is important. So here we go. Message temperature. The message temperature today is just a lot of word and a little bit of the mind, but um, not so much emotion and lifestyle. I don't think a lot of this will, you know, really garner a lot of emotion just simply because we've gone through it before. So um, again, for those people, you know, you need to go back and uh, just review. Okay, so we need to understand what a spiritual shift is before we go any further. So God allows for spiritual shifts to happen all the time. And what's generally going on in a shift, you're going from an old way, i.e. really a current way, so you have a current status, a current situation, a current place that you're in, and you're going from that into something new, something that has never been done before, something that is different. And a lot of times when you have a shift, it can be very scary. Okay, it can be very scary for people because now they have to learn again. They have to move again. But again, remember what Paul has told us is that you always need to be in a mindset of renewing the mind. So we all need to be renewing the mind at all times. But I understand, I'm human too, remember. <laughs> so that um, a spiritual shift is scary. So this is why we really need to understand this because this is really important. And what God has really shown, shown me over the last, honestly, week and a half to two weeks is that this is happening. This is occurring right now. And, um, you know, the grandmother of the group, who is my spiritual um, leader, uh, she basically confirmed it because she had the same thing going on with her. And as me and her talked about it, we recognize that God is making a move, a huge move. And so this, what I'm telling you today, is really not from me. This is actually me being that vessel for you. So be very careful if you try to fight with me today because you're really not fighting with me, you're fighting with the spirit. So, um, you know, just to let you know, so I'm not going to go too deep into that. I did want to give you some examples so you can understand how this works. Um, you got the Israelites going into the promised land and that was basically the new way. But see, it began when Moses was born because we saw then that there was an attack upon the Israelites. And that was really more of the beginning, even though it took, you know, 40 plus years for it to actually happen. The same thing you have when um, the Israelite patriarchs were about to die during the drought. And that's when you get Joseph in the uh, technical dream coat and all that good fun stuff. But it started with Joseph's vision, but it would be years before it actually happened. Um, David becoming king of Israel began um, with David as a shepherd, okay? But then he was anointed king way before he became king. See, these are shifts. Again, Christianity taking over, you know, as far as a huge major um, religious uh, push began with Christ's birth. So, and you could even argue that it, became, it, it began before that because the, uh, there was a lot of people that were prophesying about the Messiah to come. So spiritual shifts happen all the time. They're all over the Bible. Um, you know, so they're there. And guess what? God is still alive. <laughs> and so there are still spiritual shifts that are happening all the time. So never believe that there aren't, they, these things aren't out here. And God put together CSC for a reason. And um, I believe that he is preparing 
Um, many of you who have been praying for your person for a long time, he is preparing you right now to move into that place where you are gonna be in that relationship, where you are gonna be married, where you are going to have what you've been asking him for, for the last one year, two years, five years, 10 years, whatever it is. But guess what? It is going to come swiftly, okay? And we need to understand that. So we're gonna be going over that a little bit today, um, but it's going to come swift. So you guys need to kind of wrap your mind really quickly around this information that I'm telling you. And that's why I say, if people are not here today, hopefully they'll see it online. But the Holy Spirit is talking to the people that come. So, you know, we got to be real with this stuff, too. So if God has brought you here today, he's probably brought you here for a reason. And if you're new to CSC, again, he's brought you here for a reason. Okay, today's message is a reason. You know, all the other ones, like I said, if you go back and look at all the other stuff that's been in the past, you'll see I don't talk like this. But I'm talking like this today. So let's look at this, which is uh, real interesting. I don't know if anybody's ever sat around and done the numbers on this. But, um, you know, hey, you know, just for your fun, I'm not sure all of what is, is, is truly going on with this, but this did pop up in my spirit. So I thought it would be interesting to talk about. Guess what? Um, almost, what, three years ago or so, we got something called COVID. And it was introduced. And there's arguments that it didn't even really start in December. There was arguments that there was actually people talking about it um, as early as November 2019. But when you put all the numbers together, you see that next year, no matter what you believe, we'll be about 40 months in. 40 is a number that pops up a lot in the spiritual world. Um, I don't know why it's significant to God. That's not my role. But um, it is. So we're always we're almost in 40 uh, months. And I've noticed that there has been a hurried push. Um, I felt it in my spirit. Um, again, my spiritual advisor has felt it in her spirit. Uh, she's talked about how it feels like there's almost like an explosion about to happen um, in the spirit. And I truly believe that that is the release that you know we have been talking about. If you don't believe that COVID is a um is or was a spiritual thing again i would encourage you to go back and really look at the bible when it talks about spiritual shifts because it's always something that changes everything it's always that way it doesn't matter if it started with human hands or the belief that it started with human hands it's like even with this group for a long period of time i kept saying well you know when I started this group, you know, I was looking for this. When I started this group, I was just looking for friends. And then my good friend, Tashawn, told me, Joseph, you didn't start this group. God started this group. He just used you. So we need to remember that God is in control of everything. We're not control, in control, really, of anything. So really need to kind of get that through your head and recognize that this shift, this what we're in right now, our new norm is about to be over. And you're starting to see a lot of companies that are saying, okay, for those that have been working at home, we want you to come back in. For those that are doing this, you know, we want you to do that. A lot of stuff now, right now is happening, whether it's government, the Roe v. Wade, I don't care if you're pro, I don't care if you're con, that's not the argument I am making. But right now, that slapped so hard that now everybody's going crazy about it. Okay, and it's becoming a huge political issue for, uh, or a huge political statement for, you know, all the new elections. So everything is changing. We have to understand that's the whole thing with spiritual shift. Everything changes. Everything is changing, and it's changing quickly. Okay, so this is our recap. This is where our recap is gonna begin. I'm going to go through this very quickly um, because a lot of this information is old and people um, you know, may have seen it already before. So the first thing is, do you love the way God loves? God's definition of love is about caring, respect, common ground, 
seeing the good, forgiving, and dedication. It is not about emotion. It is not about, ooh, this guy makes me feel, ooh, he makes me feel so wonderful. That's not what, what love is. Okay, it's more of a dedication stance. So again, I'm not gonna take a lot of time. I'm quickly gonna go over. And remember all this information we talked about in detail in older messages. So you can go back and take a look. But again, if you're confused about something, you know, we can talk about that once this, um, once I get done. Okay, again, who do you love? What is the key to your heart? Something right now you love more than anything. You can say it's God, but I wouldn't tell you to say it's God if it's not God. Because God knows if you're lying to him or not. One of the things I've learned with God is don't lie. He already knows the truth. If you love money, he already knows you love money. If you love men, if you're a woman, he knows that. If you're a man and you love women and that's all you care about, he knows if you love sex, he knows if you love cars, he knows, he already knows. So be honest and allow the spirit to discipline you and get you where you need to be. So again, not gonna spend a lot of time moving on. Dealing with perspective. Remember, everybody has a different perspective, but somebody's different perspective is not wrong. Why is this important? Because some of you guys and ladies are not going to marry the person you think you're gonna marry. And they're gonna have a different perspective, one that you've never heard of, and you're gonna be afraid of them in the beginning, and you're gonna be mad at them at the beginning, and you might push away from the very person that God has for you because you're so worried about perspective. Well, guys in the past always, well, the person online told me that, Get away from that. God does not care about that. Unwritten rules. Okay, again, I'm not gonna, this is, this is probably the most emotional thing I have on here. Uh, we've been going over this all year, all year, all year, and people are still fighting us over this. Um, here's the whole thing. We got non-negotiables for women. Okay, guys, don't get into your emotions. Guys, do not get into your emotions. Men, I'm talking to men right now. Do not get into your emotions. Women want you to protect, provide, and lead. Do not get into your emotions. It's not a big deal because where you're going to get into your emotions is on the provider part. Because y'all think, oh, it just means she wants money. Oh, it just means she wants money. No, that is not what it means. It means she's looking for a man who understands money, who's serious about money, and who can budget his own money. I have talked to women who have made twice my salary and when they talk to me, they're very pleased with the answers that they get from me because I'm not a person that throws away money. Yet, they make twice as much money um, than me and they're still willing to talk to me. So don't get in your feelings. Women, um, the non-negotiables are to be attractive, to be caring, loving, and supportive. Women, do not get into your emotions about beauty. Because beauty for every man is different. The key is, have you maximized your beauty? Because a lot of women do not maximize their beauty. They just kind of, oh, well, it's okay. I'll just. And sometimes, especially in this season, okay, your person might be right there, but it was a bad hair day for you and you didn't feel like being bothered. And the Holy Spirit might have even told you, girl, go back in the house and do something with your hair. And you was like, eh, I, don't, I don't feel like it. All right. So listen, pay attention. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Uh, confusion. Again, anybody that's, that's telling you this crap, I'm telling you, I'm a writer. They're lying to you. Okay. Women want to be loved despite their plainness despite the fact that I don't have to be beautiful. I don't have to do all these things. I just want a man to love me for me, okay? Men and women say the same thing. They both say the same thing. In the media, Hollywood is in your head. People study people, okay? They're studying emotion and they know how to get you to buy this movie. They know how to get you to buy this book because it gives you the feels. I'm trying to get you to get out of that. God is trying to get you to get out of that because if you can get out of that, 
then you're going to start to see all these really great people around you that you act like don't exist. So you need to come out of that and start to see people and all people. Okay, and again, here's just a little bit more of a reality check. There's a lot of women and men that are walking around and all these people are saying, oh, well, you're just uh, X, Y, Z. You're just a five, like in this particular um, scenario. And then the only guy that says, hey, you know, you're a 10, she's turning to him and she's like, well, you're just a five. And it's the concept of liking the person that likes you. I'm not saying you have to settle. That's not what God is saying. But we talk about all the time about understanding your level and understanding your reflection. So you can go back and watch some videos on reflection. But the real quick way to answer that is your person is you in the mirror. Okay, just in a different sex. So if you are the type that doesn't like to dress up, then your person don't like to dress up. It was like last night, we're out there and we're at um, the uh, event. Some guys came dressed up. You know, there's different ways to dress up. Um, and some guys came in jeans and a t-shirt. Okay, and the jeans and t-shirt guys might be looking at the women in the nice dresses and heels, but the jeans and t-shirt guy does not go with the woman in heels. The woman in heels goes with the guy that dressed up. So that's how that works. Beauty. Everybody technically is beautiful. Okay, again, y'all can go watch the video on this, but um, everybody technically is beautiful. A lot of throwaways can actually be multi-million dollar essences to somebody else. The little dog is Mr. Winkles. He was sent to the pound because his tongue does not go back into his mouth. Uh, so his owner got rid of him because his original owner thought he was ugly. But then a photographer found him in the pound, thought he was super cute. He became the most famous dog in the world. He was on Sex in the City. Um, he had a, a calendar that was selling all over the world. The photographer became a multimillionaire because of him. So the reason why I say this is because, again, a lot of women don't maximize their beauty. A lot of men don't maximize their confidence. So you need to maximize what God has already given you and stop getting in your emotion about, <clears throat> excuse me, about everything that is going on. You have to, I'm really trying to get you guys to come out of your emotions a little bit because that's where a lot of you stay. And a lot of the arguments that we have at CSC deal with emotion. I want things to be this way. I want things to be this way. I want things to be this way. Okay, and a lot of times it doesn't work that way. Again, this is just something straight for the women. There are plenty of men. Now, it's arguable about how many men are quote unquote educated or the type of man that you want. Okay, that's an argument, you know, <laughs> you can argue that point, but you cannot argue the literal fact that there are lots of men in the world, okay? And in Georgia, because I know, you know, CSC's home is in Georgia, and everybody thinks all the men in Georgia are gay, there are 88 straight free men not in jail, not gay, for every 100 women. So about nine to 10. So again, you can look at the, the literal demographics if you want to screenshot it for yourself uh, to make yourself feel better. But I want women to get over this because in this season, you cannot use excuses. This is not a, um, a season for excuses. This is a season to get things done. And all this is, is still um, going over what we've talked about before. Uh, spiritual moment, Bible basics. Again, you can go all over the world about all of this stuff. But again, okay, a lot of the problems that we have now is because things got out of order. So this is what this is about. This is out being out of order. And I'm just trying to show you all these screens if you want to look at them while I'm talking. But the reason why sin came into the world was because things got out of order. Adam was supposed to be in, still the person that, you know, God went through 
And he kind of got out of order because he hearkened to his wife. And there was another time when the same thing happened to Moses and Moses almost died because he hearkened to his wife instead of hearkening to the voice of God. No matter what people say in this new world, if you want God's blessing over your relationship, it is going to line up with the head of every man is Christ. The head of every woman is man. The head of Christ is God. So it's going to look just like this little umbrella. Again, you can argue because of your feelings. That's just your feelings arguing. You're listening to the world, not listening to God, and then you're asking God for a blessing in a future relationship, and it doesn't work that way. Okay, and again, a lot of you are literally wrestling with God. He can't bless you because y'all still fighting. You're fighting with him. You're saying, well, God, I want this and this and this and this and this and this. And God is saying, no, you need this over here. And you're arguing with him and you're fighting with him. And now is the not the time to fight. It is not the time to fight. Okay, you need to understand position. Um, this was a, a term that was created by Tashan, and we use it all the time. So this does not mean women that you have to beg men, um, beg men and chase men and all this other kind of stuff in order to find good men. People often come to CSC and they think we're telling women that they need to chase C-H-A-S-E men. I think that's how you spell it. Um, no, we say that you need to position yourself to get good men, which basically means you can smile, you can say hello, you can be in a realm in which your person is going to be. So like on Thursday Talks, we had somebody talking about the fact that they went to the club and they were looking for somebody. And I'm not saying there's not great people at the club, but what I am saying is if you are an intellectual like me, the likelihood of me finding an intellectual woman at the club is actually very slim. It would be better for me to hit up a museum like last night or another place where, you know, women like that will want to hang out because that is where more than likely my person is going to be. Many of you already know this information, but some of you might get in that information and then, I mean, get into those groups and then you don't smile, you don't say hello, you have your eyes down, you have your phone up. Okay, when you have your phone up, it is like you put a wall around you and you're saying, don't talk to me. Okay, and some of you ladies need to start learning to talk to guys that you might not necessarily be interested in because you never know that guy might know somebody. He might be taking you to your blessing, um, but you don't need to block yourself all the time. You know, I understand that guys are always talking to you, blah, blah, blah. I get it. I truly do understand it. But in this season, I just don't encourage it. Okay, so again, this is just an overview of kind of what I've already talked about. Strategy, strategy, positioning, and being at your best. Okay, we need to remember that Naomi helped Ruth to strategize and to position herself. Again, y'all can go to Ruth and y'all can take a look at it. But Naomi was like, girl, you better put on a cute outfit, get your hair done, get your nails did. And, uh, you know, girl down there, girl, get that man. Okay, so she was helping her to, uh, helping Ruth in order to get Ruth to the place where she could really get Boaz's attention to make sure that um, it was a success. Okay, here's a major one that God has been telling us, excuse me, we talked about it a lot early this year. You need to recognize you need to be the good gift. Many of you are just honestly, you know, y'all, some of y'all are mean, some of y'all are angry, some of y'all are in y'all's emotions, some of y'all are just whatever it is. But remember what you see, many people are thinking, God bless me. God give this man and or woman to me. God bring my person to me. But what God is saying is I love both people. I love the man and I love the woman. So for God, both people have to be a gift. Both people have to be a gift. 
You have to be a good gift. If you cannot be the good gift, how is God going to give you to somebody else? You've got to be the good gift. That's why I put JFK down there because he was one, you know, the person that was famous for saying, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Ask not what God can do for you or this woman can do for you. Ask what you can do for your woman and or man. Okay, so this is when it gets real. I talked about this at the very beginning of the year. I'm not sure how many of you were doing it. If you are not doing it, you need to do it now. And I'm dead serious about this. A lot of you, again, want God to bless you, but you're not taking any time for God. Y'all say, oh, I love Jesus. I love God. I go to church. Okay, but what else are you doing? Nothing. Okay. At the beginning of the year, I challenge each and every last one of you with 15 minutes a day. One Bible chapter, not a verse, not a verse. One chapter, not a verse. <laughs> um, three to five minutes of prayer and reflection. And one Christian song of praise and worship. If you cannot give God 15 minutes, why should God give you anything? Anything. Many of you talk and say, I'm Christian, I'm Christian, I'm Christian, but y'all not Christian. Y'all not even close because you're not even taking time for God. I'll tell everybody that, you know, and I jokingly say that I'm a heathen or I'm evil or whatever, but I've gone through a lot, but I'm not going to lie to God about where I am or what I'm trying to do or anything like that. I'm going to be real about it. And God showed me a long time ago that I need to do something. And I don't do nearly as much as I should. But, you know, 15 minutes a day is not going to really hurt anybody. And in this season, again, I'm trying to, you know, show you guys it's a shift. There's a shift happening. And I really want you guys to jump upon that shift and, you know, or jump in the right place of it. And, if, and God is a giving, is a loving God. And he's told me this, you know, over the last couple of days and put it in my spirit that he will forgive you. He knows about all the things that you think are important. But if you would just be faithful and get on the right road with him, he is OK with forgiving you for not worrying about it and getting you where you need to be. But you need to change right now. Right now. Seriously. Okay, so here is the, the biggest mistake of missing the shift. And this is what um, I don't want any of you to allow to happen. Okay, because again, there's a huge thing that is occurring right now in the spirit. It always starts in the spirit and then it turns into the natural. And we can see right now with our own eyes and many of you might have already gone through some things where you're starting to see the literal shift in the world, okay? So you don't want to miss the shift. So this is the only thing I'm quote unquote preaching today. This was the, the slide of everything new, so to speak. Here's the whole thing, guys. Um, the, the guy was about to take these folks into the promised land and Jacob and Caleb and, and 10 other people, young guys, went into the promised land to scope it out for 40, day, um, yeah, for 40 days and just look and see what in the world was going on and trying to, um, you know, just figure out, you know, is this place good? Can we, can we take it? And Caleb and Jacob, they came back along with the other 10 guys and the other 10 guys were like, we can't go in there. They're going to kill us. They like huge giants and we grasshoppers and, and there's no way we're going to make it. So we just can't do this. And um, Caleb and Jacob were basically like, we can take these fools. We can go get that land. That's good land over there. We can go get that. And you have to realize God took them out of Egypt 
with a mighty hand. He was strong every single place. And here they are at the, the precipice of going into everything that they want, but they feared, but they doubted. And that's what God is saying. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these 10 times and have not hearkened to my voice. And I'm telling you that God is talking to you right now. I've only ever said that God has gave me like a truly spiritual like movement. I think this time, this is like the first time that I'm really coming into the group with this type of message. Um, and he is basically tells them, your carcasses are gonna fall in this wilderness. I am not allowing any of you in except for the two people that believed in me, okay? And then when we sit and we look at what it could have been, what it could have been shows up in Deuteronomy. There's an 11 day journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir uh, to Cash Barnea. Barnea, I think that's how you say it. Okay, so it went from 11 days to 40 years. That is how dangerous it is when you're not riding God's ship, when he is changing something in the spirit and then you take it lightly or you're afraid of it. Okay, so what I am encouraging you, you listen to the spirit right now. Don't listen to Jay, listen to the spirit. And if the spirit is telling you, you need to leave Atlanta, you leave, need to leave New York, you need to leave blah, 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 and move to X, Y, Z. If the spirit is saying you need to take this job over here or do this thing over here, if the spirit is saying, um, don't go to the normal grocery store that you usually go to, go across the street to the grocery store you never go to. Whatever it is, a lot of times these things come up as feelings. Sometimes they might come up as like a curiosity. Hmm, I wonder what grocery store so-and-so has. Or you might be walking through the mall and you might be saying, I wonder if Macy's has a sale. J.C. Penney's didn't have a sale, but I, I don't know. I'm just kind of itching to go to Macy's. Those things many times can be God leading you. So I can't tell you how God is going to lead you lead you. I can't tell you how the Holy Spirit is going to move upon you. The only thing I can tell you right now is that number one, you need to line up with God. And then number two, you need to be spending time with God. And then number three, you need to have your ears wide open because right now is not a time that you want to miss. Because for many of you, it, this is the time that is going to really open the door for you. So um, again, you do not have to um, worry too much about all these things. The spirit will lead you. So I do feel like the floodgate is about to be opened uh, for many of you who have been praying, um, many of you who have been trying to you know, move forward and get your person Many of you who are sitting around and you have cried in your bed and you know just the loneliness has just been draining you. Um, I truly believe that um, God is about to really open some doors and not always just in relationships, but also maybe in jobs and some other things. 